المجتمع ظهر يا يعني. yes. ظهر ظهر كده تمام طيب تمام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نبدا uh, يعني it's my privilege actually and my honor to present الليله دكتور هويدا uh, دكتور هويدا عباس الشيخ she's graduated uh, she's a consultant psychiatrist working in Saudi Arabia she's graduated from Sudan Medical Specialization Board 2017 15 she was former assistant professor at University of Medical Science and Technology and the University of Shandy. Uh, that's when she was in Sudan before she moved to Saudi Arabia. She's currently a consultant psychiatrist in addiction department at Irada Complex and Mental Health in uh, Saudi Arabia. After the Diffy Riyadh, we don't wish to be dead. The mom, 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 بس سوري معلش يا دكتور هيدا بقول لك دي مقاطعه بس يا جماعه كل زول يقفل المايك بتاعه افتكر المايك كله اوف اني واي بس ملاحظه صغيره ان صوت الدكتوره شويه واطي خلاص اوكي اتفضل يا دكتور هيدا بس ارفع صوتك لانه قال الصوت واطي شويه اوكي طيب السلام عليكم ورحمه الله كيف حالكم ان شاء الله بخير today we are going to discuss a very important topic Uh, worldwide, it's a very, very annoying topic nowadays uh, in Sudan, in uh, here, Saudi Arabia, even in Europe and uh, America. Uh, it's a very raising uh, number of uh, patients who are using uh, stimulants um, because it has uh, a lot of effects in their mental health, in their uh, physical health. So we have to be uh, familiar with uh, this, uh, this disorder, okay? So, um, as a background, stimulants have been used by humans for thousands of years. It's, no, it's used to increase their energy, their concentration, and they're uh, giving them that energy to perform their functions. Uh, there is a plant derivative, the origin from the, this stimulant, it's a plant derivative, uh, because the patient, uh, the people and the patients had uh, improved in their life and their tasks and their needs. So they refine these substances to generate new substances like uh, methamphetamine, as we know all over it's Shabu. So when you increase this new generation or create this new generation, this increases the potency and duration of action of these substances. When you increase the potency and the efficacy and the uh, duration, the side effects and the um, negative effects become more apparent, more uh, dangerous, and uh, more serious. So we know that stimulants could be plant-derived or synthetic. Plant-derived like caffeine, this is the most uh, widely used uh, stimulant all over the world. Other cocaine, etc., and cat. Cocaine is from plant coca. When um, uh, mixed with the hydrochloric acid and they form uh, some, um, some functions for it, became cocaine when added other substances as uh, colloid and other substances it makes the uh, crack cocaine okay so the plant right as caffeine cocaine etc and gas or cat the synthetic stimulants like amphetamine methamphetamine methyl fumigate and other stimulant medications that's used by With regard to epidemiology, we are mainly uh, going to concentrate about two stimulants, cocaine and the methamphetamine, because those are the both widely used stimulants and has uh, a lot of uh, serious side effects. So mainly we are going to concentrate uh, our talk today about these two stimulants. Uh, cocaine, it's, um, it's very widely used, mainly in North America, South America, Nowadays, it increased in Central and Western Europe and in South and Western Africa. Approximately about 16 to 21 million users worldwide. Um, this uh, demiology is uh, for, uh, I think, from uh, 2022. It's not uh, very recent. Uh, nowadays, it's more increased, more become common, mainly in the Western countries. With regard to amphetamine and Methamphetamine, this is mainly used in Eastern and Southeast Asia, in Africa, here in Middle East, 
Central and uh, Northern Europe, North America and Australia. It's more widely used than cocaine. So approximately about 40 to 60 million users worldwide. Okay, the main mechanism of action, stimulants, it acts by disrupting or modifying the normal communication occurs among brain neurons and the brain circuits. It's aiming to increase dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin. Cocaine acts directly by increasing the prevalence or uh, the presence of uh, dopamine in the synaptic cleft. It acts how directly? Directly, it's uh, combined to the neurotransmitters, okay? And the neurotransmitter gets, which gets in the dopamine back into the presynaptic cleft. So it blocks this and leads to increase in the amount of dopamine in the synaptic cleft which affects the brain and the, also the circuits, the brain circuits. Uh, methamphetamine acts directly and indirectly. Directly by the same uh, route, same way, okay? Indirectly, um, this is indirectly. Directly, it attacks the physical in the presynaptic uh, neurons, which produces the, the dopamine, so increases the concentration of the dopamine in this area, in this uh, synaptic cleft. So when the presence of uh, dopamine, when we are going uh, through the lecture, we notice the actions of dopamine increases more and more. So methamphetamine and amphetamines are considered more dangerous than cocaine because of uh, two reasons. The first one, due to his mechanism of action, because it acts directly and indirectly to increase the dopamine presence and its effect. Also, it is synthetic stimulant. So synthetic stimulant, this is has longer half-life and longer presence in the body. So side effects are more and more uh, dangerous. Um, as we notice here, this is the mechanism of action of uh, cocaine. Okay, it's, uh, by, it blocks the dopamine reuptake back to the postsynaptic uh, neurons. So leading to increasing dopamine in the synaptic gap. Okay. High level, okay, uh, this question for the trainees, okay, what are the functions of dopamine in general, the normal function of dopamine? Okay, assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Wa alaikum as uh, Dopamine has uh, many functions in the brain. Uh, we can divide it, so divide it into two main categories. The categories, the first categories related to the uh, movement, uh, especially for the uh, negro system. I have a question for you. 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 I have a وفي ممكن نقسمه برضه للسكند كاتيجوري اللي هي الريورد سيستم. ما عندي مشكلة في الصوت صراحة ما سامعه ما سامعك هذا الدكتور يوسف كان. كلامه مسموع كلامه مسموع لنا يا هويدة وإجابته ممتازة حقيقة يعني. He is he is giving the right answer yeah. و ما ما قلت لنا العلاقه بين الدوبامين والبرولاكتين مهمه جدا العلاقه دي شنو؟ العلاقه بين الدوبامين والبرولاكتين انه الدوبامين بيستغل اي نيجاتيف فيدباك انهيشن للبرولاكتين فعشان كده عشان كده دائما بننجح ريليشن شيب بين الانكريزنج الدوبامين والبرولاكتين بروبلم. جود. يس يا دكتورة هويدة. يس. هي أنسر يو كويسن يو فان. بروس. So high level of dopamine in the brain generally it enhances the motor function by increasing the body movements, increase the motivation, increase the alertness. This is in the normal concentration. Okay. When it increases more and more, as uh, what uh, the stimulants do in the 
level of uh, dopamine, it causes to cause symptoms, approximate positive symptoms of uh, schizophrenia, like delusions, hallucinations, and other positive symptoms. As we mentioned, with cocaine, the effects are generally short-lived because it's normal or it's a plant derivative. And in the methamphetamine, the effect is much longer. Okay. Uh, this diagram, it, uh, it uh, demonstrates the effect of, do of uh, dopamine in the low level, okay, of this stimulant, what causes, what uh, the patient or the person feels, feels wakefulness, vigilance, high attention, hyperlocomation hyper or increase in uh, motor activity. So this is the normal level, okay? When the, the patient starts to use stimulants in small doses, this is what he feels. It gives him this, for, uh, this cognitive enhancement, so the patient is continuing to use. A patient with stimulant use disorder reach a point here with power and mania. He is feeling that, or she is feeling that she has a lot of power, she has very elated mood, and she is... Uh, um, can perform a lot of tasks, a lot of activities during the day. We know all this feeling, it, uh, the substances, all substances, not just the stimulant uh, substances, it gives this feeling just once. At this point, the patient, he will never regain this feeling again. So he is going to increase the dose and uh, searching about more potent stimulant to have these feelings again the feeling of power and uh, uh, hyperactive and uh, good performance. He, so he is going to develop the side effects, okay, or the symptoms which occur for us, uh, more more elation in, my, in mania and, uh, and mood, uh, psychosis and confusion starting to appear in the patient, up to developing coma, and finally, this circulatory collapse um, may occur due to overdoses of using these stimulants. Okay. First, the root of administration affects the substance use disorder or the patient is using substances or not. Yeah. That is the root of administration of the substance it can affect the uh, progression of the illness, the effect of the illness on the patient, or not, or there is no uh, difference. Assalamu alaikum wa al khair. Um, this is Gupna. Uh, indeed, it affects uh, the uh, the tolerability of uh, the drug and the effect of the drug uh, itself, and it would uh, put the patient in a danger of uh, overdose easily, more than the oral uh, or the nasal uh, um, routes, other routes. I mean, of uh, administration. And also, it, too, it it puts the patient in the effect of intoxication and the tox uh, the, the effects of uh, the IV use itself because it can cause uh, pericarditis or uh, endocarditis. I mean, uh, thrombocytitis, uh, disease of uh, the vessels themselves, and uh, the of course the needle uh, prone. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, the the uh, STDs that could be uh, an HIV or hepatitis C virus or hepatitis B virus, the disease that uh, that could be uh, transported by, via um, via needle uh, usage, the sharing of the needles. Okay, okay, thank you, Dr. Lubna. So, uh, root of administration of the substances, as you mentioned, it differs in the progression of the illness itself and the effect of the substance use. Okay, almost we know that there is five most common routes of administration, psychoactive or stimulant um, substances. Oral consumption through direct swallowing, okay, or gumming. Gumming, it means that they are using substances and rub it in the gum, okay, through inter intranasal consumption, uh, insufficient, inhalation to the lung, smoking, intravenous injection. Also, they can use it through the vagina or anal insertion. Each of these routes has its side effect, as we know, uh, and the amount that um, present in the body and the brain also differ through these different routes. Cocaine and uh, methamphetamine can be smoked, okay, as we all know, 
can be uh, sustained in the form of powder and uh, methamphetamine also in the form of powder. Um, and there is amphetamine, which is uh, called uh, captagon or known as captagon, which is came in a form of tablets. It can be crushed and used, dissolved in two ways, either dissolved and uh, smoked, uh, dissolved and being injectable through IV root, okay, or could be crushed and uh, snorted. Okay, uh, the root of administration, as we said, affects the amount. If the dosage which uh, the body or the person takes from this stimulant, which develops to the brain, the speed at which it delivers to the brain, the resulting intensity of the stimulant effect. Okay, persons prefer the route of administration affect, as we said, the depth and chronicity of the effect which caused by stimulant to the patient. An amount of a stimulant chronic effect varies during different across individuals, although there are few data to predict how long it will take for a substance or stimulant to begin in the chronic effect. Uh, many variables, many things that um, affect the, the chronicity of use in the substances, like the amount of the stimulants used. The effect will be different from individual to individual. Um, as we see from our clinical experience, some patients are using two, three grams of stimulant or cocaine, others using less amount than that. It differs also between male and female, okay? Even in this amount, if a male use a five gram or three grams of uh, stimulant, whether it's a methamphetamine or a cocaine, it differs in the effect of male in, uh, for female. Also, the frequency of use, it can affect, this is lead to chronic use of the stimulant. If the patient is using more frequently, more side effects, more prone to intoxication, more prone to withdrawal symptoms, the root of administration, as uh, Dr. Lubna mentioned, it uh, determines if the patient is snorted, okay, or take it through smoking. Mainly through smoking, this is the amount reached the brain is more rabbit than which ingested or uh, rubbing in the gum or other way. If there is a significant medical comorbidity affecting the absorption of the substance, whether it's snorted and uh, whether it's uh, ingested or uh, injected. Also, if there is occurring mental disorders, this is affected patients to use the substances. That the researches talk about this area mainly about occurring mental disorder with stimulant use disorder or with, uh, in general, the, all the drugs of abuse or of um, dependence, uh, mainly between male and female. Because they found that the researches male started to use uh, substances in uh, response to peer pressure, while female, they started to use it as self-medication. Uh, in general, no, not that uh, female has uh, prone or has uh, more trauma, so they are more prone to develop post-traumatic stress disorder. This is one of the mental illnesses that is uh, with high comorbidity, use of uh, stimulant use disorder. Okay, females in general have many roles. Okay, and uh, so they are developing more uh, mental illnesses like anxiety disorders and uh, depression. So they are using stimulantly more. Okay, uh, also if there is co-administration of other substances, some patients they are co uh, using two substances at the same time. Okay, some are using cocaine with opioids because opioids are depressants. They make them the effect, they reduces the effect of cocaine, which is highly stimulant. So they are using with it uh, opioid, okay. Uh, others they are using um, at the same time uh, methamphetamine and brigabaline. Uh, they are using it together. This is giving them the sedating side effect of it. And they are using the stimulant uh, effect of uh, increasing activity and poor sleep. So they are administering both substances at the same time. Also, the environment in which the substance is taken, this is affecting the effect or the other stimulant used. And if it's uh, this patient or these people 
are genetically loaded and has some metabolic factors. We know that some patients and some people are rapid metabolizers, others are slow metabolizers. This will affect on the presence of the substances in their bodies. As a slow metabolizer, uh, the substances may be staying for longer time, so they are more prone to intoxication, uh, more than the faster metabolizers. Okay. When you are working in the emergency, the most uh, important thing that you are maybe facing uh, the intoxication, whether it's cocaine intoxication or shavu or methamphetamine intoxication. Uh, cocaine intoxication has three stages. The patient will, be, will come to you at the emergency room either in each of these stages. Uh, the stages are divided according to the um, amount of use or the, the amount of use of the cocaine and the time which the patient presented to you. In stage one, in every stage, there is central nervous system symptom, there's vascular system symptom, pulmonary symptom, skin symptom, and through the whole three stages, there is mental and psychiatric manifestation. In the central nervous system, when the patient is at stage one, this is an early stage. This is in here, the intervention is very, very important because in this, you can save the life of the patient. If he develop and go to stage two and uh, went to stage three, here it will be very difficult. Uh, most of the patients are lost when they reach to stage three. This is here that occurs. The central nervous system, patient may come complaining of headache, uh, nausea, vertigo, switching, pseudo hallucinations, free convulsing movement. When you are taking history, you know that from history, this patient is using cocaine. When you elaborate more, you will, you will know the amount. So you will put your, in your differential diagnosis, cocaine intoxication, before you go for other differential diagnosis. In the vascular or in the central and the uh, cardiopulmonary, there is increase in blood pressure. There is ectopic beats to be found. Patient will become tachypneic. All the time, he has a high, hyperthermia. They get in very, very high, uh, fever. Uh, they may become uh, shepherding, sweating, okay, and very, very high uh, temperature. Psychiatric manifestation patients may become came in queue in the emergency in euphoric state, um, had uh, delusional, uh, persecutory delusions, merely being followed. Uh, they may become agitated in response to this paranoia. They are confused. When you assess their orientation, they are not uh, fully oriented about they were pray, uh, where, where are they. They are agitated, emotionally very labile. And sometimes they are weeping, crying to lose themselves. Sometimes they are laughing very loudly and they are very restless. Okay, this all we call it stage one of cocaine intoxication. In stage two, in central nervous system, this is my, the patient is becoming deteriorating more and more due to maybe a very large amount which the patient taken or comorbid medical illnesses or other things, okay? Here in the central nervous system, patient develop seizures, encephalopathy, increased tender reflex, um, okay, uh, in coordination in the cardiac symptoms, also still there is high blood pressure, more than stage one, arrhythmias, there is peripheral stenosis, okay, in the pulmonary, tachypneic start to be gasping, irregular breathing, the skin is still hyperthermia. Stage one and stage two, as we mentioned here, this is the most important one, two stages, because you can intervene and save the life of the patient. In stage three, this is more deterioration in the um, condition of the patient. You can develop areflexia, coma, uh, coma, fixed dilated pupil, and loss of vital functions. In the blood pressure, become low. There is ventricular fibrillation, cardiac, cardiac arrest, and uh, pulmonary. They become apneic. They develop respiratory failure, cyanosis, and agonal breathing. The difference uh, in stage one and stage, uh, stage two, you can manage 
in a psychiatric uh, hospital. In stage three and late stage two, the patient needed to be uh, transferred because this is a emergency. So you can need to develop uh, to reserve them for medical work or ICU. Okay. Uh, we're talking about uh, intoxication caused in cocaine and methamphetamine. Then we will see the management from you. I want to hear more than I need to talk. Methamphetamine intoxication also, there is cardiovascular signs and symptoms of methamphetamine, like chest pain, aortic dissection, in a severe chest pain, agonic, stopping, okay, myocardial ischemia infarctions, palpitation, tachycardia, dyspnea, edema, hypertension, um, violent behavior. Here in methamphetamine, why we said it's more dangerous? Because here, the patients are very, very violent, violent towards themselves and violent towards others. Uh, here occur the um, homicidal, uh, which we hear about in, uh, among the patients who are using methamphetamine. They are in intoxication, okay, and the bomb intoxication. They are not used in the hospital. Either they kill other people or they kill themselves. Even woman it could be here. Also seizures, movement disorders. Uh, they may become confused, severely psychotic. Uh, as you know, the uh, methamphetamine and amphetamine increasing the sexual uh, performance, so you become very hypersexual with very disorganized sexual behavior. They can develop hallucinations in the chest, pneumothorax, stimulus station. They can in, have uh, multiple abscesses, multiple cellulitis. Okay. If you are in the emergency room and you face a patient like this, how are you going to manage? Yeah? What's coming in your mind? Are you a are you ahead of the train? Yeah, Shabab, you're talking about it. Okay, 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 I'm going to share it. اتفضلي دي دكتوره بدات تتكلم اتفضل يا دكتور اتفضل طيب اول حاجه ستارت وذ اي بي سي دي يعني اول حاجه اللي هو المانجمنت اوف لايف ثريتنج اذا عنده اول شيء الاير ويف تاخد ان الاير ويف بتاعه بيتن انه بيتنفس انه بيتكلم او مش بيتكلم يعني الاير ويف بتاعته فاتحه تشيك البلوك بريجر والهايدريشن والتريز البوبي تمبريتشر تشيف اللي هو البرين برضه جارد اجينست سيجر اذا قبل ما تحصل سكيور الاي في لاين و give the best amount of other other medication to decrease the temperature and monitor it if the patient is can be treated at the the psychiatric setting I will continue if he cannot I will safely transfer him to the to the to the to to the other department ICU for instance if the patient is not able to do Uh, convulsion start with the genzo days uh, for for example uh, then then a b c d yeah, after the stabilizing of the patient and we can even the the whole the health management protocol with the addiction so thank you معلش ثم انا ما سمحت الدكتور هو هو ادي ادي اجابه متكامله ايوه ادي اجابه كويسه اللي معي ما سمعت الصوت ولا شنو ما سمعته يعني بس مشكله مع الدكتور ما قاعد اسمع الكلام حق الدكتور طيب Uh, in general, I don't know if I'm debating well or not. Uh, as all doctors, if we are, if I take a history suspecting a patient with a stimulant intoxication, 
like any other patient, this is a life threatening, okay? So, A, B, C. What A, B, C? In medicine in general, apart from psychiatry. A, B, C. What is the A, B, C? هو بالضبط جواب عليها يا 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 هو بالضبط قال اي بي سي اوكي طيب 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 ممكن دكتور يوسف ممكن تاني تقول اجابتك تاني بس لو عشان دكتور هوية تسمعها طيب ما مشكلة بقولها بحاول اعلم الصوتي ايه بس دقيقة غير ما هوية سامع الصوت بتاعه لا لا صوته ضعيف وراني صوته ضعيف مع غريبة جدا غريبة لأنه احنا صوته سامعينه واضح جدا الغريبة اوكي طيب اعيد يعني ولا شو في ريكورد؟ كده قول واضح شويه طيب اه اتفضل يا دكتور طيب قلنا البيشن لما يجي اول حاجه تو بي فورم الاي بي سي دي اي ابروتش اللي هو الاي فور اير واي البي فور بريثنج سي فور سيركوليشن دي فور ديسابيلتيز اي فور اكسبوجر البيشن اول شيء ذا موست امبورتنت تو تشيك الاير واي از ات بيتنت اور نوت Uh, and uh, do maneuver for opening uh, an airway and who are chain lift or uh, chain uh, lift or the jaw thrust and B for uh, breathing, check if the patient breathing or not uh, within an, or, and check a rate and measure an oxygen saturation uh, and a C and provide oxygen yeah, needed a C For circulation, check the blood pressure, the blood rate, and capillary refill time. To check if the patient are in shock and to guard against shock, if the patient is in shock, and give fluid as needed. The D for disability, and we are measuring the DCS, the glass glucose scale, and measuring the glucose level, and guard against uh, uh, convulsion. Uh, by and guard against convulsion before it's okay. Uh, also, I uh, forget to uh, secure an IV line. Uh, and uh, and E for exposure and measuring temperature, uh, decrease the temperature and uh, inhibition is uh, hyperthermic. Uh, check, uh, try to decrease the temperature by uh, external uh, baths and Removing uh, heavy clothes and providing a paracetamol. Uh, if the patient is convulsing, give him an anti uh, convulsant such as the benzodiazepine and refer him for further management at the ICU by, uh, the, the, by, schedule, by, by transfer. Okay, okay, Shukran Dr. Actually, when the doctor who got the treatment, Uh, here we are treating symptomatically. There is a valid doctor, ABC, uh, provide the airway, the breathing, and the circulation, taking sample for toxicology. Uh, I preferred uh, blood samples because this is detected very specifically the amount the patient uh, taken, okay? And the other fun liver function test, uh, the, the, Uh, acid based balance and electrolyte, all the whole investigation. When the patient, and we know all patients with the stimulant use disorders and other substance use uh, disorders, they are neglecting themselves. They are not caring about uh, their uh, feeding, their uh, uh, nutrition, and their well and their health. Okay, so uh, they become very, very uh, dehydrated. So we need. If the patient is still in stage one and stage two and can take orally, the first one we have to afford him with uh, rehydration. If he take orally, we give him orally. If couldn't or he is going to enter in stage three, we provide him with IV fluid. The fluid he takes, the patient will uh, will decrease his uh, temperature, will uh, manage uh, further in his condition and improving it. Hyperadrenergic state, this uh, high blood pressure and uh, arrhythmias, we can cause beta blockers. This can uh, reduce the harm and, uh, and uh, prevent further into coronary syndrome. We mentioned that the patient became confused. So when a patient, confused patient has certain precautions we do for confused patient. 
you need to build him in a very high, uh, quiet uh, area or a room, uh, prefer to be by himself or herself only. One staff nursing, no, no need to change the personnel every time to orient this patient about the place, about time, about uh, who is going to provide him with the service. Reassure the patient if he can accept your work and uh, explaining the position and what is happening to him and what is the situation. Okay, if the patient is uh, becoming calm with this behavioral intervention, so you proceed on because the intoxication it lasts for a few hours. It's not very, very long, lasts for a few hours. Okay, if the patient is not responding, so you have to, to do further evaluation, you need to calm your patient. We can use benzodiazepines. Okay, we need uh, mainly if the patient can take orally the same. We afford him with orally benzodiazepines. If not, we can give him injectable. Okay. Here, the patient is yes, he is confused, agitated, have labile mood, but he has no psychosis, not yet to develop psychosis. If the patient is psychotic, we need to give him antipsychotic. The same. If the patient can take orally, we give him orally. If not, we give him uh, parenteral uh, antipsychotic, and more preferred haloperidol and olanzapine. Okay. In these situations, because the patient remains, we, we uh, mentioned that they may have seizures or pre-convulsive symptoms, so it's preferred to give them benzodiazepines than antipsychotic. Why? Why do you think we prefer to give anti, uh, uh, benzodiazepines before antipsychotic? For this patient, uh, mostly, mostly his symptoms of psychosis and agitation would wear out after uh, the intoxication state or uh, the level of the intoxicants will decrease. So I would be uh, pleasant to uh, ease the, the patient through the agitation, and then I would see if the if the symptoms of psychosis or uh, the effect of stimulants wear out after that, he would not need further uh, antipsychotic medications. If the persistence of uh, psychotic symptoms happen after he is uh, cleared of intoxicants or uh, the stimulants, then uh, he might need uh, the the antipsychotic effect. Um, uh, if the patient, uh, uh, if he gets out from this intoxication and persists, persistent of the uh, psychosis, this will be drug induced psychosis. Why is the intoxication? The patient becomes severely psychotic. So you cannot do anything. He is agitated, hallucinating, has persecuted delusion. You need to give him antipsychotic, meanwhile, to resolve the symptoms at the time, at the time of presentation. Okay. It's preferred to, be, to give uh, benzodiazepines. As we know, benzodiazepines are acting as an anticonvulsant. And antipsychotics increases the seizure threshold. So if you give the antipsychotic without benzodiazepines or before the benzodiazepines, here, if the patient is in a pre-convulsing state, you will go to get him into convulsion. And if the patient is convulsing, this is in my work with the condition. So benzodiazepine will calm the patient and act as anticonvulsant at the same time. Then you intervene with this antipsychotic. Okay. The other uh, thing which we see in the patients in the uh, emergency or in the hospitals in general, in the cocaine withdrawal. Also cocaine withdrawal happens in three stages. Uh, crash state, lethargy state, and extension state. The crash state started from the last dose. If the patient uh, stops suddenly using of uh, cocaine or even he reduces the amount which he or she uh, used to use it, he will develop these symptoms here. It lasts for about uh, from day zero, we said, up to day 10. The lethargy state um, here, there is no sharp demarcation between these stages. The patient may be in the crash stage and started the lethargy stage at the same time. Okay, the crash stage from day zero to day 10, 
The charge stage is from day uh, 10 up to 10 weeks, and the extension, extension stage also, uh, this is may last up to six months. What are the main um, symptoms here? Uh, mainly in the withdrawal, it's mainly psychiatric or mental symptoms. There is, we know that stimulant causing hyper in anything, hyper, um, hyper elation in mood, uh, hyper activity, hyper anything. So when the patient is withdrawal, it will be the opposite symptoms. Extreme fatigue, okay, patient became drowsy, will develop anxiety, exhaustion, irritability, increase in appetite, and intense love of, ple of pleasure. Okay, the second stage, here the symptoms became worse. Some symptoms improve, like uh, fatigability, may be improved a little bit, but other symptoms may deteriorate more in the form of irritability, lack of concentration, patient is not concentrated, um, uh, they are complaining of uh, forget, uh, forgetting things very easily, uh, very distracted. Here the patient started to develop depressive symptoms. In the second and third stages here with the withdrawal symptoms, the depressive symptoms could be severe, even the patient could develop um, uh, suicidal thoughts or even attempts or they can commit suicide. Also from the symptoms of the second stage, vivid dreams. Dreams is all about the using of the substances. It's very, very fearful. Patient became very anxious, uh, very fear, uh, has a very poor relationship with other people because all those people in uh, his mind, these dreams are inserted by them. He is uh, complaining mainly because this, uh, um, those people who uh, force him to leave, uh, to stop using substances, okay, also they had very problematic sleep and uh, compound with fatigue. In the third stage, the extension stage, or the withdrawal could be protracted. Um, in general, it lasts up to 10 weeks, but in some patients, it could be protracted losses for more than that, up to six months. Also, there is a profound sense of uh, distraction, distraction with the life. The patient became very dysphoric, very uh, apathy, uh, lack of interest in everything in his life, feeling of uneasiness. Here it started in this third stage and the second stage. The relapse rates are very, very high because the craving starts very, very sharp and uh, very intense. The patient is still there problematic in sleep. Uh, also, sometimes they had psychomotor agitation out of the blue, became very agitated, very aggressive. Okay, and also unpleasant dreams still persist here. Same with uh, withdrawal in methamphetamine. There is physical symptoms and there is mental symptoms. Is the physical symptoms the same? Patients are very hyperactive, okay? For three or four days, they are not sleeping. So when they stop using of substances or reducing the amount of the substances they are used, they are very fatigued. They couldn't do anything. They had to increase appetite because stimulant use, um, there is medical uses of stimulant like uh, amphetamine, the treatment of ADHD, okay, in narcolepsy in uh, losing of weight or obesity. They had poor appetite while they are using, so they are losing weight. When they are stopping or withdrawal, there is increased appetite, also problem in sleep, okay, headaches, acts and pains all over their bodies. In the psychological and cognitive symptoms with regard to uh, methamphetamine, withdrawal, anxiety, depression, uh, irritability and mood swings. Also, they had paranoia. The intense craving, the same, okay, and difficulty concentration, memory, memory issues, and confusion. Okay, uh, with regard to um, withdrawal symptoms, here uh, there is two school. If these symptoms are mild, the patient could be treated as an outpatient with the uh, medical um, medication like uh, you can give sleep aids, 
if the depression is uh, mild, you can use only cognitive behavioral therapy because these symptoms will persist for a while and then subside because this is due to withdrawal, not a drug induced. Okay. But if the symptoms are very severe, fatigue is very severe, and, uh, psycho and uh, there is a, with the depression, uh, suicidal thoughts or even uh, and attempts, here it needs to be treated as an inpatient. There is chronic uh, use, as you know, some patients started to use uh, stimulant for a short period and they can stop. But others, they persist for many years. So what are the chronic uh, effect and chronic uh, problems that uh, persist with the patients. Uh, there is psychiatric uh, complications. Those patients, they are can complaining of mood swing and anxiety. Even few patients, they are uh, developing uh, panic attacks. Before the use of substances, they had known this. Also persistent of the uh, psychosis. Some occurs and some uh, remitted, but others about uh, 5 to 15 percent, the symptoms or psychotic symptoms persist, and they have compulsive sexual behaviors. Neurologically, some individuals with research they found they develop neurodegenerative disorders, such as Parkinson's diseases and other neuro neurodegenerative disorders, and they have abnormal movement. This is due to chronic use of the stimulant. Other medical complications, these are the psychiatric, the other medical complications, they may have severe dental problems. Um, a lot of uh, patients with stimulant use, mainly the uh, methamphetamine and uh, amphetamine, they have a lot of dental problems, even have abscesses, uh, they lost all their teeth, and there is a lot of deformities in their mouses. They have severe allergic reactions at the injection site. Okay, uh, they had, as uh, one of your colleagues mentioned that when they are having the uh, stimulant through the IV, this is can cause heart infection and it will affect it myocarditis. Also, they had respiratory complications, uh, facial and body sores due to scratch. It's, it's very obvious their bodies extreme weight loss and starvation. This is per se, this loss and the starvation can cause other uh, medical uh, problems, uh, sexually transmitted diseases like HIV, hepatitis C, hepatitis B. Also, they had kidney damage and liver damage. Okay, when we came to talk about the management of stimulant use disorder, um, here, there is two components of the management. Uh, we go through managing the intoxication, the withdrawal. But what about the long-term medication? Till now, there is no approved medication by any agency like FDA or any uh, other agencies. There is some medication, particular medication. All the medications are, they are under research still now, okay? Uh, this is due to pharmacological intervention. From this medication, which are used, okay, like uh, psychostimulant medication, like mifepristone, uh, modafinil, okay? These of the, uh, some of the psychostimulant medication used, when the patients use them, okay, with the chronic use, they noticed that during the research, patient has reduced uh, craving for using cocaine and methamphetamine. But here arises some questions. When I have, uh, do I have to uh, substitute the uh, short acting, okay, with long acting stimulant? We know that uh, methamphetamine and this uh, modafinil, it's uh, some sort of psychostimulant. Is it uh, where I think I will get the patient to stop. When we talk about medication, uh, we talk about uh, something may last for years. So is it um, affordable to use it? Short acting with long acting. Some uh, research talk about antidepressants like the propion, mainly and metazabine. The propion, the research and the research, they found that this propion has some stimulant effect so they can act 
as a substitute, okay? Uh, but it's not very strong evidence in reducing the craving or resistance use. Also, uh, one of the proposal as uh, anticonvulsants like Topramed, it's, uh, it's weak in reducing the uh, craving for cocaine, but it's not effective in methamphetamine, naltroxone, disulfram. One of the research and the future researches like the transcranial magnetic stimulation. Okay, um, in the management of substances in general, must there is a pharmacological interventions and psychosocial intervention. The psychological or psychosocial interventions like contingency management, cognitive behavioral therapy, motiv uh, motivational enhancement therapy, and support or peer groups, uh, the alcohol uh, anonymous or narcotic anonymous, and there is a matrix model. In the contingency management, I'm sorry, this is for very, very brief, okay? The contingency um, management here depends on the uh, positive and negative reinforcement for the patient, okay? Uh, when they are starting to stop the medication or reducing the use, so there is reinforcement. Uh, like uh, token economy, there is something that provided for the patient because he changes this behavior. In the cognitive behavioral therapy, this simply involves the interaction between the thoughts, feelings, of act and actions of the patient. Why they mainly about the thoughts? They need to, uh, to detect and know that what are the main thoughts which uh, put them into uh, this route to start using substances and other things. And when they are detecting these uh, thoughts, how, what are their behavior and their emotions towards these thoughts? and what they act. So when they are detecting these disturbed thoughts, they are starting to change it into a more uh, constructive in things, in thoughts that they are doing in their life. Motivational enhancement therapies also, it's uh, based on uh, increasing motivation for the patients and um, develop them and uh, learning them new uh, coping skills uh, to replace their bad uh, skills or bad behaviors in using substances. Support and, we, and peer groups, uh, those are not, this mainly uh, depends on the uh, 12 steps. Uh, these are group of um, patients who are uh, stopping using the substances. They are uh, have uh, certain things, uh, certain books, certain, um, yeah, and it's not, very common in use in certain areas that are using this support and beer groups. It's not very um, uh, yeah, I mean, evidence-based in the response in this stimulant. The above three psychosocial interventions, those are evidence-based and they are very effective in the uh, treatment of the uh, patients who are using substances. And um, the very effective and very efficient one is the model uh, matrix uh, model. In our hospital, we are using uh, the cognitive behavioral therapy and the uh, matrix uh, model. This is a rehabilitation program uh, taking the patients or talking about the uh, a lot of it involves in, in it in this matrix, the cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational enhancement therapy, or included is in, in this uh, matrix. Uh, model of treatment. Mm, any questions, uh, any comments? I think uh, this is enough for today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aveda. It's very nice, very informative uh, presentation, Hagiga. Very good presentation. Any comment? Any comment? طيب انا عندي سؤال لكم انتوا ذاتكم يا شباب. Uh, do you think a tolerance للستيمولانس ولا comparing بالاوبيات which one is the patient develop tolerance more or quickly and why؟ في اي واحد يقدر يجاوب السؤال ده؟ الامفيتامين دوزز هاف هاف لايف شورت هاف لايف غير كده غير كده ليش ليش الناس دايما بيستعملوا كريستال ميس ولا فيتامين بيكون بيتجدد
they don't need very quickly more than the obvious why do you know the reason why لانه الستيمولس دائما بتعمل مور بتستعجل بتشتغل في الريوارد سيستم زي ما قال الدكتور هويدا حسي وبتعمل مور سايكولوجيكال ديبندنس عشان كده الناس دائما بيكونوا زي سيكينج لما نستعملها بيكونوا سيكينج البليجر والسايكولوجيكال افكت بالنسبه للاوبيس بتشتغل في الاوبيت ريسبتورز اكثر حاجه عشان كده دائما ما بكون في سايكولوجيكال ديبندنس الا لما يكون في ويزدرول سيبتومز الشخص اللي يكون عنده ويزدرول سيبتوم بعد ذلك بيديفلوب سايكولوجيكال ديبندنس دائما الديبندنس بتاع الاوبيات هو فيزيكال ديبندنس عشان كده it takes longer to tolerance to develop عشان كده الستيمولس بيكون مور التوليرنس بتاعتها مور كويكر عشان كده از مور دينجرس الديبندنس بتاعته الكريستال وكده الكريستال ميس والحاجات دي كلها الكوكايين وين ذا بيشنس في بعض البيشنس بيستعملها وانس اور توايس And they get uh, depend hooked on it, and uh, become dependent on it very quickly. Okay. Any other question? Anything for Doctor Ahuida? What is the, yeah, Doctor? Is there a difference between the intoxication and the overdose? Or are they different phenomena? رهويدة؟ ما سمعت السؤال ما عايزه ترابي العظيم؟ السؤال هو هل في فرق بين الانتوكسيكيشن والاوفر دوز ولا هما يعني ذا سيم تيرمينولوجي؟ ذا سيم تيرمينولوجي اوفر دوز ذا سيم وين ذا بيشنت هي از نوت انتندينج تو تيك ذيس اماونت اوكي بس از وي ون اوف ذا سلايد شير ذات ذير از ون فيلينج اور ذيس فيلينج ويتش Uh, the patient experiences, he will never, whenever he uses and increases his amount, so uh, he will never regain this one. So he's going to increase and increase and taking over those and became intoxicated. So guess it is a physical uh, symptoms and signs. But over those, when he's taking the amount in the more, uh, more than intended, okay, to, to, be, to have that feeling. Yes. Um, Ms. Alkhir, I have a question. Uh, like, uh, for for the uh, the the withdrawal uh, depression, if it's secondary to the use of uh, psychostimulants, uh, shall we start the SSRIs or anti anti antidepressants right away, or we shall wait and like uh, intervene with uh, psychological intervention? Uh, and if we we choose the psycho uh, psychotherapy how long it should be till we start the uh, antidepressant medications yeah. and okay uh, patients uh, with withdrawal in uh, may this is observed this uh, methamphetamine if when the patient he reduces the amount or she reduces the amount or stop using the amount and started to develop depressive symptoms you need to evaluate the depression If it's mild depression, you can go with psychotherapy, okay? Uh, because withdrawal uh, in uh, misamphetamine, people are talking about a uh, few months, two or three months, and they will be subsided. But in real life, we face with a lot of cases, it's protracted, it's extended up to six months and beyond that, okay? Uh, so the patient, if you couldn't, uh, you didn't start, to treat, the patient is going to deteriorate more. The, if the patient is, more, is mild, you can use uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, okay, and reassure and explain for the patient. But if the depression is more severe, the suicidal thoughts, severe anhedonia, severe uh, uh, loss of interest, you need to intervene with medication here. You start immediately. You are not going to wait till two weeks. Okay, if the symptom is very severe, but if it's mild, you can wait and reevaluate again. Thank you. Oh. Any question? Uh, yes. Thank you for the presentation, Doctor. I have a question. If you know, if 
جانبيشن وعنده استميلا نيوز ديسوردر وبعديها لقينا انه في جانب اي دي اتش دي اندياجنوست اي دي اتش دي هل وي ستارت الاستميلا برضه ولا اسكيب الاستميلا لنون استميلا ديديكيشن اوكي احنا هي في حته تتكلم عنها لكن احنا صراحه خسرت الحته دي هنا. الميكانيزم اوف اكشن اوف ميسايل فينجيت اند ستيمولنت ان ذا بيشنت ويز اي دي اتش دي ات ديفر فروم ذا ميكانيزم اوف اكشن اوف ستيمولنت ان ا بيشنت ويتش هاز نوت ذيس النس. اوكي سو يو هاف تو ستارت ويز اف اتس افيلابل You can, um, because the patient has a tendency to abuse, you can skip the uh, stimulant like uh, missile from date. There is other substances which uh, act the same. They are stimulant, but not a mechanism of action. It's not like uh, amphetamine and uh, missile from date differs. You can use it if it's uh, available. But the mechanism of action of the medication, stimulant among patients, it differs. From the substance use, it's not the same mechanism of action. So you can use it. Yeah, I think I'll add also to Dr. Wade answer. And no, there, there medication, for example, is called atomoxetine. Well, atomoxetine, a lower non-stimulant, like can you use license for ADHD. So you can use. But the problem with the atomoxetine is that it's related to the action, the reaction, the reaction is related to the SSRIs. فمشكلته انه بياخذ وقت تيكس تايم زي الاس اس ار ايز تاخذ 2 ويكس او 4 ويكس تو ستارت وركينج فبكون الترناتيف لكن الستيمولنت لكن في النهايه اف ذير از نو اوبشنز ذن يو كان ستارت ميسايل فين جيت يعني خلاص بيشن عنده اي دي اتش دي هاف تو تريت الاي دي اتش دي ذير از نو اذر الترناتيف اوكي اني اذر كويشنز Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Huayda. Shukran jazilan. Very nice presentation. Dr. Abdul Ghani, well, Dr. Yasir, any comment? If you want to say something, we'll be able to talk to you. My comment. Thank you. Thank you, Huayda. Thank you, Azama. Very beneficial and nice presentation, Huayda. Thank you for all of you and the people who are here. And such uh, interactive sessions are more uh, fruitful, more beneficial to the community, inshallah. So, I'm always looking for interaction sessions. Thank you very much for the participants and the specialists who are here with us. A few of them, I don't know all of them, but Sir Abella, Hamad Ibrahim, Tayyip Siraj Ad-Din, Fathiyya Shabbu, the President of the Tadrib. فما اعرف نسيت منو لكن حضروا الحمد لله اختصاصيين زائد المتدربين المتدربين برضه الحمد لله في اسماء لاول مره تظهر نتمنى انه يظهروا طوالي وفي اسماء غايبه لسه نتمنى انه نتمنى انه الحضور اخواننا يكون اكثر من كده زي ما قال عظم المره اللي فاتت وياسر هذا البرنامج ليكم انتم مخصوص ليكم انتم وهو بنشوف زملائكم واساتذتكم